Good evening, guys. Dr. Kelvin here. You're welcome once again to my regular Thursday evening lives. I mean, it's one of those things I try to do to connect with my people to, well, to share some insight that I have got over the, well, over the period, over the time. And we, we just share, we just share something because Charlie, it's, it's, it's hard out there, you know, it's hard out there. So we need to, we need to engage, we need to connect and we need to, you know, let people know what they need to know because um, as they say, knowledge knowledge is not in one man's head. <laughs> and knowledge is, the, one of the characteristics of knowledge is that it's hidden. So if somebody has to discover it, you know, literally remove the cover from the knowledge before it becomes apparent that this thing was there all along. And so, you know, every time that, you know, I come across something that inspires me, I, I, I love to share. I mean, it's human. Whenever you find something good, you know, we share, we talk about it, we, 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 we engage with others, you know, we let them know what, uh, what is possible for them, you know, as has been possible for you. And of course, every, as, as my mantra is, and I'm, we I'm wearing my mantra, if nothing changes, nothing will. And that is the reality. If you don't do something differently, you can't expect to get different results. You know, so if you don't seek the knowledge that you need to fulfill the, the, the purpose that you are called to fulfill, it's been nearly impossible to actually fulfill that purpose. In fact, and I, 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 I believe that people die for three reasons. One, you finish your job. I mean, you came here for a purpose, you completed that purpose. And number two, you are wasting God's time. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you number three later, but these two yeah, are part of the reasons why people, people die. So, hey, I want to make sure that I fulfill my purpose before I leave this episode. This and I think this is one of the, the things that I, I, I was brought here to do, which is to share knowledge, which is to teach. Of course, um, when we do these things, people people assume that, I mean, I've got it all figured out why I come here and I talk plenty, but no, actually I don't have it all figured out. In fact, it is because I don't have it figured out. That's why I do these things because um, I've come to realize, I mean, I, I teach not because I know everything. I teach because it's part of my process. It's part of my process to understand. It's part of my process to you know, to learn, you see, because um, if, 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 I, if I read it, if I learn the thing and I don't talk about it, I don't actually know it, you know, so until I'm able to break it down for a five-year-old to understand what I'm talking about, then, you know, it, it, it makes more sense to me myself, and so that's why I do this thing. Anyway, let's, let's not talk plenty, let's get straight, straight on, on script. This evening, we are talking about when vision leads. This is very, very important. In fact, this is one of those sessions that people actually pay Pay, pay several hundreds of dollars to be a part of, but we're going to try and do, we're going to try and scratch the surface. The intention is for you to be inspired enough to go and dig deeper. You know, that's, that's, the, that's the motivation behind what I'm doing here this evening. But when vision leads, you know, when vision leads, what does that even mean? Well, let me take from this angle. Now, success, there are two things that successful people do that many other people don't do. And that's what actually makes them successful. The first thing that successful people do, number one thing that they do, that if you as a person take up that responsibility, take up that task to also do the same thing, it's going to turn your life around literally. Number one thing is that they know where they are going. And if you have a pen, you should actually be making notes, you should actually be writing this down. Successful people know where they are going. That's one of the most important distinguishing features between people that succeed and people that fail. And it's not, I'm, I'm not even talking about positive form of success. I mean, I'm not talking about when, when you are doing good. Even people who, who do bad things, they know where they are going. So they, 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 like, they know where they are going. That's number one. You must know where you are going. If you don't know where you are going, it's difficult to, to, to know what will take you there. And that's vision. That's what we're going to talk about this evening. Vision is the destination. It's where you are going. So that's number one. Then the second thing that successful people do, and um, that many of us don't do, is that once they know where they are going, they find people or they find somebody, a particular person who is already at where they, they want to get to, you know, and they model this person, they follow after that person, you know, so it's either the person is where you want to be, or at least that person is on his way to where you want to be. And once you find that person, you model after that person, you follow that person, you become a student of that person, you learn from that person, you become a mentee to that person. And once you, 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 you find somebody who you can model, chances are you are going to even become greater than that person, which is why they say that the student always becomes better than the teacher, because the student is coming in there with his or, or her knowledge already. I mean, he has something then he takes from the teacher what the teacher also has and adds to what he has already. You know, and so naturally, a student must become better than a teacher. If a teacher is still better than a the student, then it means the teacher has actually failed. It's not the student that has failed, it's the teacher that has failed. 
And so we need to get this clear. And so two things that success people do, number one, they know where they are going, they have a destination in mind. It's because success is deliberate, you see? And that's the, the mistake a lot of us make. Success is deliberate. Nobody becomes successful by accident. And you see, in, in fact, even if you achieve some level of success by accident, even if you got there by chance, to stay there, to stay successful, to stay relevant, it, 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 it must be a deliberate effort, something that you do purposefully, something that you do. Um, uh, point is, chance does not repeat itself. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. And so you may have achieved some level of success by chance. You may have passed that exam with, without learning because the, the, the one page that you, you sort of glanced through is where the questions came from. So you sort of passed that exam. But try that again next time and see if you pass that exam. It's not likely to happen, you see. And so to, to, to be consistently successful, to stay relevant, it comes with dedication. It comes with a certain level of commitment. And until, that, until you make that commitment, until you make that effort, until you, you make that dedicated um, attempt to, to be better than yourself, your success is very, very limited, you see. And this is another thing I learned. You see, process is more important than results because it is the process, it's the process that is that guarantees the results. If you if, if your process is flawed, if your process does not follow the principles of life, you will never get the results you are looking for. And if any the result was gifted to you, if you do not understand the process, if you don't know the process that got the result, you cannot sustain the result. And so this is why success needs to be deliberate. It's something that you must aspire to become, something that you, you, you plan to become. You see, you plan it, then you pray about it, not the other way. You don't pray for success and then plan. No, you plan for the success first, then you pray about it, and then most importantly, you work out that success. You see, when we go to the good book, it says that we need to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. <laughs> it says we need to work out our salvation with, with, with fear and trembling. And this, this verse is actually found in the book of Philippians, right? If, if, if you know if you know where that verse is, you can drop it in the comment section. But this is a verse in the Bible, in the book of Philippians. It says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Now, what is that salvation that the book, the good book was referring to? Of course, you might, you might say the salvation life after death, after death a judgment, etc. No, but I believe that it's here and now. And that salvation that we're talking about is your success, the purpose, the reason why you are here on this earth today. You see, we need to begin to understand that our, our, our purpose is, is, is sacrosanct. I mean, our purpose is God-given. God placed something inside of you, and that's why you are alive today. And until you discover what that purpose is, until you begin to work out that purpose, you, need, you, you, you begin to make the kind of impact that you're put here to, to, to make. You are literally failing as a human being. And this is a, this, this, these are deep revelations. And until you begin to understand them, or, or until you begin to attach the level of seriousness that is required of it, you may never, you may never get where I'm trying to drive to drive me to towards. It's because you need to work out your purpose with fear and trembling because it is that important. You see, many of us, many of us, we live our life, you know, routine life, and then later, much later in life, when we are weak and frail, then we realize that we wasted our life. And at that point, it becomes very difficult for us to make the kind of impact we could have made if we were. If we, if we were deliberate about what we, what we needed to do, if we even knew what we needed to do in the first place. And so I'm, that's why I'm challenging you. I'm telling you that vision needs to lead you because when you know your vision, when you, when you know your, first of all, when you know your purpose, it helps you to craft your vision. Of course, the, 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 the purpose of a thing is not, is not assigned the thing itself. It's assigned by the, by the creator. And so if you believe as I do that somebody out there created you, then it makes sense to go to that person and ask him what your purpose is. You need to find out what your purpose is because when you know your purpose, then you can now craft your vision. And then when you have your vision, then you need to work out your salvation. You need to work, work towards that vision with fear and trembling. Now, these, these are these are deep, deep, deep revelations that we are doing this evening. We are trying to mash everything together in a short amount of time. But the point I'm trying to make is that there's some there's a reason why you are here. And you as an individual needs to identify that reason, that purpose for which you are here. And you, begin, and you must live your life along the lines of that purpose. It's because once you know your best, once you know where you are going, it helps you to clearly see what won't get you there. 
it would help it helps if you see what we get today. I mean, imagine I wake up in the morning, I live in a crowd, and I need to go to Kumasi. I use this example a lot. Those of you that engage in love, I use this example quite often. I need to get from a car to Kumasi. That's my destination. My destination is Kumasi. Now, the minute I set my destination as Kumasi, then it tells me automatically which vehicle will get me to Kumasi. If I go to the station and I need to get to Kumasi, I there's no way I will mistakenly sit in a car going to Ku or Akosombo because there's really no way to get to Kumasi from Akosombo. And so I cannot mistakenly sit in a car going to Akosombo when my final destination is Kumasi. And so it, 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 this is a, the simplest way I, I can explain why vision must be you. Because once your vision is clear, once you know where you're going, immediately you know what's not to associate with. Many of, I mean, when we're, when we're growing up, there was something called peer pressure, you know, People, you talk to your friends, your friends are doing this, especially negative things because peer pressure can also be positive, you see. But the reason why many of us, uh, or some people, I mean, some people were led astray is because they themselves did not know where they were going. So because once you know where you are going, there's nothing like there's nothing like negative peer pressure. You yourself will find the right association to help you get to your destination. If you want to start a farm, if you, want to, if you have passion for farming, obviously, when you, when you wake up in the morning, you're going, I think, if you live in your grandmother's house and your grandmother has plenty to land, you obviously go and practice the farming. Everybody will see that this person is drawn towards, towards farming. And so when they go to town and they are buying gifts, when they are buying toy cars or somebody else, they may buy you a hoe and cutlass because they've seen that there's something about, about farming that is, is, is drawing your attention. You see, everybody will see it. And so the people around you will even push you towards the achievement of your vision, towards the achievement of your purpose, which is why even as a country, Ghana, we need to figure out who we are, where we are going. Because it looks like every politician, every political party comes in, they change the vision of the country. And so over the past how many years, the country itself is confused because we don't seem to know, uh, we don't seem to have a single vision that we are following. So every four years, there seems to be, a, to be a change and then there's an erosion of what we've achieved. And then we have to sort of start all over again and try to build forward. And then somebody comes in and then shakes it again. Listen, vision is long-term, you know, because you need to have, a long-term vision, and then you can break that vision into short-term, bite-sized, achievable goals. So that as you achieve the goals, it helps you to, you know, take uh, celebrate the little victories. You see, but how can you celebrate the little? It's like again, let me let me go back to my Kumasi example. If I got up and I'm going to Kumasi, when I'm driving myself, especially, I have I have some 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 landmarks that I use. Some I, I, I divide the journey, you know, and, and after every every so many kilometers, I see my landmark and I know I'm making progress. And I'm excited, you see. So, so I, I get my first landmark. That's a celebration. I made it. I didn't get into an accident. I survived. Yes, I'm happy. Now, let's focus on the next landmark. The vision or the destination does not change. But by breaking it down into short-term, short-term achievable goals, it helps you to stay motivated. It helps you to stay engaged. It helps you to, make, to, to, to know whether you're making progress or not. So vision must lead you. If vision does not lead you, everything else, everything we are doing is a waste of time because how do you know how it's going to be of benefit to you? I know, again, you go back to the Bible, and the Bible says that all things work together for, for good. It's true. So all the mistakes you are making, all the things, all the experience you are getting, it's all going to come together, and it's all going to make sense eventually. But you see, <laughs> it's also important that you, 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 you how do I put it? This is where mentorship is important. That's what I'm trying to say. Because when you have a mentor, it mean, you don't need to make the same, the same mistakes that your mentor made. So that if, if, if you know where you're going, you identify somebody who, who is already there or somebody who's on the way there and that person is leading you, is guiding you, he, he has made a mistake already. So when you get to the same place, he can tell you, he can show you how to avoid that mistake so that you can jump over that mistake. So if it took him five years to get to that destination, it's going to take you half the time. And that is why mentorship is important. The mentor that you're going to get will depend on the vision that you have, which is why the number one thing that successful people do is to figure out where they are going. You need to spend time. You need to spend time alone without your phone, without any distractions. Sit in your room. If you, if, if you, can't, if you can't afford to go on a retreat, sit in your room, lock the door, pray, think, meditate, whatever you need to do. But by the time you come out of that room, you need to have an idea where you are going. So that once you know where you are going, you can now work out how you can get there. Many of us are working out the how when we don't even know the where. We don't know where we are going, but we're working on the house. So, for instance, you speak, so you speak to many young people, and hope for that matter, they are working hard because I want to make money. I need to make money. We are making money to do what? What's the money for? 
if you don't know where you're going, the money you're going to make is all going to be for survival. But God made you with a much bigger purpose than just to survive. Animals survive. Human beings, we live. We must live. We must fulfill the purpose. We must fulfill that dominion mandate that God has placed on us. And that's another discussion altogether. But this evening, I mean, this is this is what I feel. I, I feel let's come and share with you right here. I've seen some comments, some comments on the on the on the page, and I'm excited about the comments. And um, Joshua saying thanks for always opening our eyes. Oh, thank you very much for that feedback. And then he's, he's doing the summary. You plan it, you pray for it, you pray over it, and then you work out the success. That's that's the process. You plan it first, and then you pray. Many of us are praying without even knowing what, what we are praying about. So we do general pray, prayer. Have you not realized that God likes specific things? When he was giving the commandments, he was specific. When he was instructing Jesus, there was a specific plan. God doesn't do generalized things. So let's stop doing general, you know, general things. Have a specific plan. Then you can discover a discussion with him. Charlie, he is your God. You know, you have a discussion with your God, you understand, about a specific plan. Then you can he can help you tweak it and make it, you know, bring it, break, break it down. What, what you know what I'm saying? That's God to him and just give him a gen. Lord, I pray to succeed. I pray for success. Success in what? I don't know. Anyway, and then Paul. Okay, yes, Paul is giving us the verse. The, the verse. Yes, Philippians 2.12. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Yes. Thank you very much, Paul, for that. Dr. Paul Henry Johnny Avery. Thank you very much, my, my guy. Anyway, guys, so this is what I came here to share with you this evening. I'm saying that let vision lead you. If you need help figuring out what your vision is, there are so many resources available that can help you, of course. But the easiest, the cheapest of all the resources is one up there who you have access to right now as you're sitting here. So get in touch with him and let's sort out the vision. Because if you don't know your vision, if you don't know where you're going, everything else you are doing is really a waste of time. The success you need, you can get it right now if you know what exactly that success even is. So thank you very much, guys, for joining me. I'm sure I'll do this again next week, Thursday. This is the knowledge of evolution. And well, you can see my library is green. I started with one shelf now, it's doubled. Next thing I the next time I'm gonna go all the way to the other wall because learning is part. If you, when you stop learning, you start dying. So let's keep learning, let's keep reading, and let's keep knowledge alive. And I'm giving throwing out a special invite to each and every one of you to join my book club. We do this every Saturday morning at 7 a.m. Join the book club. Let's learn together and grow together. Good to see you there. Send me a message if you're interested. I'll get you get your details and be part of the book club this Saturday. So that we can take from there. All right, guys, stay blessed. Have a lovely evening. Peace.